Hello, and welcome to my part 1 and 2 review of Doctor Who series 12, Skyfall. So Skyfall part 1 and 2. Um, I was going to do these individually as episode by episode. But I kind of felt like, um, I think, I think because the story is two part there, it needs to be viewed as a whole. So I'm still going to talk about them separately. And I've got my notebook here, I wrote down a few things. Um, disclaimer, this is very much an opinion review. Um, it's not meant to be in any way educational or um, informative in any way. It's literally just what I thought of the episode and if I liked it or not. Um, another disclaimer, I didn't really like season 11 at all. <laughs> um, I thought it was not that good, not good characters, very low stakes. Very found it very hard to warm up to Jodie's doctor. So um kind of lost interest but not that much interest i still listen to big finish and stuff so it's not like i gave up doctor who i still watched the whole season um and i i, I have a poster of jodie whittaker on my wall before her season started so i'm not anti jodie um so let's get into it i wrote down a few different things for spyfall part one and part two um but overall i just want to i want to get it back that like the, these the two pressure has basically restored my faith in Doctor Who. Um, I kind of understand what Chibnall is doing now, and I feel like whatever good things that were in season eleven, uh, series eleven, or should I say, um, he's kind of perfected them. He's he's taken all of the good aspects I've I kind of found from that series, which like were things that kind of kept me going. Um, and he's really perfected them, like the kind of campy kind of cheesy nature of doctor who is definitely back but he also makes it really dark at times as well which i found very interesting so we'll just get through and we'll fly through episode one and we'll see what i thought about it um this is extremely from my head i only watched both episodes one i was going to do a review and kind of like jot down things i saw at the time but you know i think going off the first viewing is enough because that's what a review should be it's your initial viewing you can't really be watching stuff over and over and over again because you're just going to nitpick then um so starting off um we had the kind of recap with jazz yes not jazz oh god yes ryan and graham who i'm very underwhelmed with but um i like this kind of catch up with them because it gave them a tiny bit of character development um graham graham is on the all clear still his health is great ryan still has dyspraxia he um through a basketball and through a hoop um so it's kind of recapping the characters in like 20 seconds each which is perfect because that's all the character development they had in series 11 kind of um and then we get to doctor who's tinkering with, with her tardis and then all the mi mi agents come around here i don't want this to be like a summary of what happens in the episode um okay so fast track they're in a the car and they're going driving and then it's a horrible cheesy Per, someone gets shot in, in the car and then the car is like screaming die 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 and then hijinks ensue with the car and i hated that i just hated this scene it was too cheesy and like that t die die thing oh it just really put me off i was like oh no it's gonna be the same again doctor who won't be good i won't enjoy it <laughs> but i still have to watch it because i'm a, i'm a fan so then that happened, and then we got into Stephen Fry, and then Stephen Fry is like talking to Graham, and he's like, "Oh, oh, hello, Doctor, how are you?" And then the Doctor comes up, and she's like, "Um, actually, I'm the Doctor." Or Graham's like, "I can't remember." What's Graham? He's like, "Oh, he's like, oh, um, I'm not the Doctor. Why would you think I'm the Doctor?" And then the Doctor is like, "Oh, I'm the Doctor. Hello." And then Stephen Fry is like, "I've read all the files. Um, the Doctor is a man." And then Jody goes, well, I've been upgraded. And I liked that line. Um, a lot of people online did not like it. Um, they basically thought it was like another, like, fuck men kind of situation. But it's not. If you go back in time um, throughout the Doctors, every Doctor think they are the Doctor. Like, they're the upgrade version. Like, especially in Day of the Doctor, where the War Doctor, who's basically denounced being the Doctor, is, is taking the piss out of matt smith and david tennant's doctors like he's like stop being kids like why are you wearing sh sandal shoes i'm the, i'm i'm unreal and you're like goofs so the doctors always thought that they have been the 
the main version, the best version. Um, and even between um, 12 and 1 in Twice Upon a Time, like, they were just like nagging on each other. The doctor loves himself, but then when he's in the room with himself, he's like, yeah, you're making some choices there. So I like that. So then we get introduced to this like convoluted plot with like the Kasavin and these light, they're light bulb men. I call them for episode one because we didn't know their names until episode two. And all this spy stuff happens. The crew gets split up into two. Ryan and Yaz, they go and talk to Barton. And I thought it was, I kind of like the moment between Ryan and Yaz where Yaz is all like, I got this. And Ryan is like freaking out and he forgets to take off the cap of the camera, even though he's a photographer. And then Barton is like obviously a big bad guy and they find out that he's only 93% human. And then on the up flip side, the light bulb people are there again and they trap one in a box and O is talking to Graham about how he knows the doctor and he's he's researched the doctor and he knows a lot about the doctor. You know, like all this kind of stuff where they're kind of like teasing out the plot. They're trying to find out like all these elements of like who are the light bulb men? Um, what do they want? Um, why are they killing spies? And then they get like this graph of all these different things of all plans of the world. And I'm basically just like, wow, this is this is unreal. Like I, this is such mystery. I want to know what why the aliens are here and what's going on. I want to know why this is happening and I want to know how the doctor will happen. And then Yaz gets in danger and she gets taken. And I like that. I have that written down. There's actual stakes. I felt already off the bat of this season. I actually thought that something bad was going to happen to Yaz. I thought she body swapped with the Kasavin when she went back into the box. But that wasn't the case. Um, so then they, there's like three episodes in this episode. In this opening part. Like there's the the... The gang getting back together and spies. Then there's the middle part where it's like the espionage, espionage mission. And then there's the final part where where they're like at the party. It's like nearly four. And then there's a chase at the end. And and then I didn't really care for the party part. Like, and the snap moments. I liked it. It was funny. But I was like, it's, it kind of felt a bit disjointed. And like, there's too much going on. And the bond party... I enjoy it. It just basically like reignited the fact that Doctor Who right now in its installation is a campy romp, basically, with really dark moments. Um as as we'll see, like like in Moffat's era, like when people died it was like like well, not really that big of an issue, but like like people just died so much in Chiblin's era, like crazy crazy amount, like just random, especially in these opening episodes. So the doctor confronts Barton and Barton's like, you better not fuck with me or I'll get all my people after you. And then they go on a big chase and then O is still with them. And there's kind of like teases and bits like when I kind of thought that he was going to be a double agent. Um, and I thought like, oh, it's just going to be a stupid twist where he's a double agent and then he's going to crossfire the doctor and Barton's going to get away or something stupid like that. Because I was like, this O guy, like something didn't really add up especially when he was like there was a few comments that he made and i can't remember all of them but i know the main one was when he was a runner but he when oh i can't re i'm not really that good at sprinting um but there was one before that as well where he said he was like an accountant or an analyst or something oh he's not he was like i'm not really used to being out in the field even though he was the master and the master is used to that but um yeah plot twist big massive twist oh is the master and then everything goes crazy cockamamie mental the plane explodes always shrinking men in matchboxes <laughs> and and the doctor is like freaking out and all all the companions ryan yaz and graham are like what what's going on and then the doctor gets transported to tube world and they're all gonna die and the master's like i got you and everything's a lie Everything you know is a lie. And then he disappears and Barton's not in the cockpit. There's a bomb. Oh, it's everything all at once. In like literally three minutes, it's like, oh, take it all. And and then the episode ends and I'm like sitting at, sitting at the kitchen table watching Doctor Who and like, holy fuck, Doctor Who just got me. It got me. Literally just got me. And I haven't been got by Doctor Who in a long time. Like I remember... The last time the Master came back in World Enough and Time, like, it was advertised, obviously, and I was just watching World Enough and Time, 
waiting for the master. I was like, where is he? Why is Missy not in the episode that much? Where's where's the doctor in this episode? Why is it just Bill and this old guy? <laughs> and and the Cybermen. Um, but um, yeah, I was really shook by it. And um, immediately like, oh God, like it makes sense. Like Missy died the last time she was in the season. Um, the doctor and it's the first um, time the master's been a person of color. It's like all added up and all made sense for Chibnall's air of Doctor Who where he's like, do you know what? Everything you want, I'm going to give it to you. you like, you know, like, uh, you want a female Time Lord, you got us. You want a female Doctor, I mean, you got us. You, you want, like, everything. Like, you want more diversity? Here, have more. Um, it, I really enjoy this. And I really like um, this new take on the Master. I can't really think of his name now at the moment. Sa I know his name's Sasha, but I hope I'm not saying it wrong. Um, I'm not that good at names. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then that ended and I was like, holy crap holy god like that's crazy like that was really good and then i was like i can't wait to see what happens with these light bulb men and then the second episode happens and it's just like oh it's like a full oh it's like a full season of storyline in one episode again it's like chibnall i just feel like he has a habit of being like okay here's my memory board of what I want to be in my opening, what I would love to be in the opening part of my second season. And he writes all the stuff down. And then I'd say like, if another writer would be like, okay, all of these ideas, I need to take half, I need to put them into two parts. And he's like, no, I'm taking everything. I'm putting everything into it immediately. <laughs> and we're gonna get there and we're gonna do it and we're gonna have a good time. Um, I kind of don't want to talk about this episode until the end. Like, I liked the, the the character of, of Nora and Ada Lovelace. I really liked them. They were very interesting. I liked the time jumps. I didn't really care for the present day stuff with the companions. Um, even though I have warmed up to them quite a lot now, I do like seeing them. The laser boots part with Graham dancing. Oh, that was, it was so cheap. Okay, this is what I wanted to get into. Doc, the, the way it's working is that there's like moments of pure cheese with Graham like dancing and, and shooting all the monsters, dancing, doing like double taps. And then like the next scene is Barton committing matricide, killing his mother. It's like, like, what, like the tone is just so all over the place. And, but I liked that. I, I kind of liked, I was like, whoa, like, oh my God, I can't believe he's like killing his mother. Um, like, this is crazy. Like, like she wasn't in any other scene. She's brought in and for Barton to kill her and then she's gone. And it, and it's not brought up why he did it or it doesn't make any sense to the story as in why he, he wasn't, like, their, his plan was, their plan was to convert or to format people or to upgrade them, as I would say. Um, and she just dies and it doesn't make any sense. And there's like this silver robot doll person <laughs> that has all the salmon in it. I don't know. <laughs> the plot is so com com convoluted. And if I was to go through and what it's all about, I would probably be giving more time and effort than Chibnall did in, in solving it. Because um, the plot... Ba the, basically, the... the the danger in this episode is, is just explained away by the Doctor and Ada just running in. Like, he's like, oh yeah, well, I went back in time and, like, I put a virus in it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I put a virus in it, Doctor and Master. Now, fuck you. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. Um, that was something else. And the moments between the Master and the Doctor, it was kind of an... I, um, the Master's timeline is up for debate because they don't mention the fact that Missy was a good girl or she was trying to be good at least um the master's gone crazy and then there's our final twist at the end where everything is a lie and the master has fucking destroyed Gallifrey <laughs> and Gallifrey's blown up into the smithereens and the doctor's like oh fuck <laughs> it's very funny I don't know why it's just, like it's fucking crazy. Those two part episodes, I think Doctor Who has never done something so crazy like that in, a, in its series opener. Ever. Like, <laughs> Chimel is just like, like, let's just go. Like, let's actually, like, like, compared to last season, season 11, where, um, 
like very little happened and very little storylines happened and it was all like episode 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 this 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 open partner is like everything's fucking connected <laughs> You want Time Lords? Like, the doc, someone pointed out to me that the doctor sees Gallifrey before the doctor has even mentioned that they're a Time Lord. <laughs> oh, God. So then the doctor comes back and, and she says, um, but they're all like, what's happening? Like, who's the master? Why do you not answer questions? And it's just like, God, those two episodes are wild. And I'm fully convinced that, like, Barton got away because he's going to come back. There was no, like, him getting, like, handcuffs and all the Kasavin just stopped because of a virus. <laughs> they were just like, oh, we're just going to give up. So, um, no, I, I fully think that this is my theory on the Kasavin because they're still mysterious people. Um, the Kasavin are Cybermen in, that, that the Doctor, tr remember in Doomsday when the Doctor threw the, the Cybermen into the void? And they're, they're there for all the time. And, like, the Void has, like, shaped them and changed them into these, like... Basically, they've changed themselves into this, like, electronic thing that they're going to use phones to upgrade people. And they think that the Kasavin are going to come back in whatever Cyberman story is coming later. Because Barton said he was 93% human, but they did tests on him. So, like, if he's not 7% alien, then, like, he's 7%, like, robot or cyber man inside him. So that's my theory on that, that they're the, cyber, they're the cyber cybermen from the void come back and they're going to be on Earth and they're going to do some stuff there, and Mary Shelley's going to be there as well. Um, I'm a bit of a cold. <laughs> okay, so for now, final thoughts. Um, the master has to be after Sim. It doesn't make sense. It actually makes more sense for him to be after Sim and before Missy. Because he goes and he obviously finds out these this thing about the timeless child that we don't know about, and he destroys Gallifrey, um, in whatever timeline he's in, and then the doctor, ex the doctor basically like strands him in Nazi Germany, and disables his perception filter. So she's like, not only have I outed you as a double crosser, but now like feel the wrath at the hands of racism, and it's like oh. Doctor, that's a bit dark. And then he makes a point of like walking back in when he comes back in to the room with the dancing robot statue. Um, that like he's like, I am after doing 77 years of, of hardship on this world. And I'm like, okay, so like the master has experienced like oppression and, and racism now. I'm like, it, 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 it's a bit jarring, but I'm also like, okay, it could tie into why Missy wants to be on an arc of goodness, but... Also, at the same time, Missy doesn't turn good until after, until she's put in the vault. Like, she doesn't want to be good. Like, so my, my theory is that, like, after she destroys Gallifrey, like, she, like, the old master, as I want to dub him, he basically feels guilty about everything. And then he decides to try and redeem himself. But Missy at the start is not redeemable. So it doesn't really add up unless it's like guilt in the back of her head. I don't know. Um, so overall, I think. OK, I'm going to rank the, the episodes on three different facets. Doctor Who, Doctor Who quality. OK, two entertainment quality and three general television drama goodness. OK. So for a Doctor Who story, which is the number one category, I would I would rank it like eight out of ten for the two parts because it's just crazy. It's got good mythos in it, um, great Doctor moments where she's like, "I don't got a TARDIS, I've got Ada," and it just was great. <laughs> Lots of like, like what was my second? <laughs> I can't get over the fact how bonkers Chibnall's Doctor Who is at the moment. Like, I thought Moffat was bonkers at some point, but, like, Chibnall's just gone off the rails now at this stage. Um, so we had Doctor Who. We had entertainment-wise is just a 10 out of 10. I was completely entertained for the two episodes. Like, I was I was laughing. I was like, oh, my God. Um, like, I was like, whoa, Doctor Who is killing the mutters on television now. 
if that is his mother, but like we don't even know who she is. We ba like Brian basically just comes in. He's like, I kidnapped you here because I knew you wouldn't come. Now die. I was like, she's like just an old woman strapped in a chair. It's kind of, cr it's like a weird. It doesn't link into his story at all. And then there's like the whole like view on phones and how they're taking over our lives for like two minutes that like everything is watching we've we've you don't think we've got all your data well we've got it um and then for tv drama it's like for actual television drama that like if i if i compared it to like cohesive stuff um it's like a, a six out of ten things don't make sense um the plot just gets resolved by the doctor being like I resolved the plus, guys. I went back in time with the master to start this. <laughs> Got it. Oh, I forgot to put that stuff in the plane. I'll be right back. Um, I kind of hate it when Doctor Who plots just get resolved in like four lines of dialogue. It's like, oh my God, I spent two hours like devoting into this. We still don't know, even know who the Kasavan are. We don't really know what they were trying to take over the world. Yes, but like, why were they doing, being spies throughout time? Uh, like, and then their plan was to take over. I don't want to pick it. I don't want to pick the plot. This isn't a review. This is my reaction. Um, if I was to pick the plot, then I would just be here for hours. Because it's so convoluted and everything. It's like really convoluted. But, um, yeah. So, 8 out of 10 for Doctor Who. No, did I say 8? I did. For two for the both stories combined together. Then 10 out of 10 for entertainment value. And then for television series, 6 out of 10. Um, what I will say about it is that I'm really kind of worried about Chibnall and what he's going to do to Doctor Who Mythos. Like, is what's he going to do with that timeless child? Um, and Gallifrey been explode. Um, I'm really worried. I hope he doesn't, like, the thing about Time Lords is that I kind of like the way that we don't know that much about their society and stuff. We know it's like elite and kind of stuff like that but like we don't know that much and i don't really want to know that the master and the doctor there and the time lord of species like i hope it's not all a lie i really really hope that that they're not born from humans oh i pray the lord i really hope it, that doesn't happen i want my time lords to be aliens i don't need them to be like humans from the future like the master to be like we're it's all lies we are humans and we and they changed us or I'm stupid like that um i'm very excited for the next episode edheim orphan 55 um because i really love to take you away takes you away it was one of my favorite episodes from season 11 series 11 and it's actually one of my favorite doctor Who episodes i really enjoyed that one so there you have it there's my review of <laughs> Spy Fall Part 1 and 2 Faith in Doctor Who completely restored um, I don't I don't have that much nitpick It's been a wild ride But um, I wouldn't have it any other way And fair play to Chris Chibnall to been like Listen, okay I know a lot of you didn't really like the first season But like here's, here's like some story and some plot points Some action Here's everything to keep you invested Even if you're not getting the, the hard drama moments that you used to get Or like the the great characterization that you used to kind of get with with Capaldi sometimes, especially in the that first those first two seasons, um, that Capaldi was in, Capaldi or Capaldi, who knows? And I'm excited to to watch the season now, and I'm ready to see the season arc and see how it all plans out. So, that's it. <laughs>